What is up? I am Justin, and this is Blender Frenzy. Welcome or welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about creating your own custom key map to fit it specifically to your own workflow. Um, I've already made two videos, one short and one long. The short video is like two minutes long. It's a quick tip. Um, the long video is about 40 minutes long. It goes really in depth with changing your shortcut, specifically designed for the video sequence editor if you're doing video editing in Blender. So I wanted to make another one with just the key map. Whatever editor in Blender that you're using, this still applies. But before I do that, if you are using Blender to do your video editing, I wanna show you this. So this is a custom key map that I made for the fastest way to edit in Blender, in my opinion. And if you don't wanna change any of your shortcuts yourself, I've already changed them all for you. It's ready to go, you just download it and and import it into Blender. I've also included this cheat sheet to show you all of the original. Here's the original uh, Blender defaults, and then you have the new ones that I changed it to, and here's the names and stuff. And I've grouped it in several different ways. This is grouped by categories. I've also have it uh, sorted by alphabetical, by name, original, and then new, and then value, so that it's just really easy. It's searchable, um, and you can find this over at gumroad.com slash blender frenzy will take you here and the frenzy freebies click on this and right now i have a free vse shortcut cheat sheet and the current list of files down here you can see it comes with the actual key map it comes with the cheat sheet it comes with the excel spreadsheet so that you can do your own changes and have your own shortcut cheat sheet and then it also has a keyboard SVG, just a, a little picture of the keyboard that you can see uh, right now. But the Frenzy Freebies, it's a membership for $0 a month. I'm going to be continually adding stuff to this uh, to follow along with my free tutorials. So it's a really good deal. Check it out. And then if you want to support me, Skullface Mini Course, go check it out. Okay, anyway, back to Blender. Okay, so I've got a little scene set up here. This is just a strip of a video that I did for my old man tutorials. And again, this is the video sequence editor, but you can use these same concepts all throughout Blender. So let's go to the preferences. Um, you can actually go up here to edit preferences, or because I already have this window open, I'm gonna put all it up in here by coming up to this icon in the corner and then coming all the way over here to preferences. And just uh, make sure this is out here like this. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is come up to preferences in your preferences, and then uncheck auto save preferences because we don't want to save our key map. We want to export it. And there's a little bit of a bug that goes on with this is the reason why I'm doing this, but make sure you don't have it saved. And you see here this uh, save preferences with an asterisk. The asterisk means we haven't saved it yet. So that's what we want. Um, then we want to come down here to key map and then we will look at these preferences later because there's two ways that you can actually change your shortcuts in Blender and that is through the menus or the preferences. We're gonna go through the menu first. So if you come down to a menu item here, like this strip, you can see the name on the left and then the shortcut on the right if it has one. Now, not all of them have shortcuts, so you won't see the shortcut name if it doesn't exist, but I'm gonna change the split and the hold split. Currently they are K and Shift K. So let's look at see the originals here. So I have both of these strips selected. I'm gonna press K to cut or split the strips and then G to grab and you can see that I've split those strips there. Uh, it's the same thing with the shift K, just like that. And now I'm not gonna go into the difference between those, but you can see that's how that works. So I'm gonna change that. Let's go to strip. I'm gonna hover over split, right click and then change shortcut. And then it asks you to press a key. I'm going to press F to change to F. Same thing, right click, change shortcut here and press key i'm going to press shift and then f as i hold shift down and then it will change that to shift f easy as that and now we can come over here and see make a cut here with f and it does the same thing um, make a cut here and shift f does the same thing okay so that is the way you can do it through the menus you can do that to any almost any of these shortcut menu items here. Uh, but you can also do it through the preferences. And again, if you code a key map here in your preferences, um, you can see that we are, have already three different types of key maps. We have Blender, Blender 2.7, and then we have industry compatible with things like Maya, 3ds Max, if you're familiar with those. And you can switch back and forth between these, but we wanna make our own. Now you would think that you would just press plus and then 
add a key config pre preset, and then click OK. You know, name it whatever you want. No, don't do that because uh, there's a bit of a bug where if you add it here and change the shortcuts, it's going to change them globally uh, for all three of these plus yours. And this is why we're not saving our preferences. But we need to change a few more things first. So if you're changing your shortcut through the preferences, you scroll down on the preferences, you see quite a long list of things. This is everything that you can change regarding any sort of shortcut or mouse button in Blender. And so if we scroll down here to our sequencer, we can see um, our sequencer. And then all the way on the right, you can see this restore. If I click that, it's going to restore the ones we've changed. So this will be changed back to K and shift K. But I'm no, I don't want to do that. But let's open up this drop down. And we've got three more drop downs. Let's just do global. And then we can scroll down and see all of the ones in the sequencer. Uh, now this is a very long way to do this. You can also, if you're just, if you know what shortcut you're looking for, you can search it by name. And so just make sure you click name over here and then click the search and say, let's just say split. And you can say, see all the places in Blender where you can split things. So let's just scroll down and you can see sequencer is uh, towards the bottom here. And we have two sequencer ones. We've got sequencer and then sequencer tool for the blade and you can see all the buttons that have the word split associated with them so here we have that same restore button but we also have these two arrow buttons and you can see all the rest of them are x's everything is an x except for these two arrow buttons because the x means we want to remove this item completely which we don't so don't click that but here we have restore and this will restore this to the original so I can either click restore here, which will restore all of the sequencer items, or I can just click on the individual ones like this. So I restore that. That's K, but this is still shift F. So I'm going to click this one too, shift K. Now that's all of the ones that were changed. So this restore button goes away and you can come down and see in the menu, it's reflected down there as well. But let's say you're trying to look for something like hide strips. So um, let's say we want to know how to hide these strips. So I'm just going to type hide. And then we scroll down and look for sequencer. Do do. I might be going too fast here. Do do. Oh, but we don't see a sequencer anywhere here. Well, there isn't one. The closest we get is the clip editor here where it says hide tracks, which is H and then shift H and then alt H. So let's just try that. Let's try H. Okay, H. Oh, okay, that's good. Let's try shift H, which shift H. Okay, so shift H hides all of the ones that are not selected. And what does alt H do? Alt H. Okay, then it unhides the ones that are selected. So let's change that. Let's just change alt H. So I'm gonna click on that and then press U for unhide. You know, we got hide and unhide. So I'm going to press H to hide and then U to unhide. U, 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 U. It's not unhiding. Why? Well, obvious, because this is the clip editor and this is not the clip editor. This is the sequencer. They're different editors. So I'm going to restore that. So I know that these buttons do work for the sequencer. So we've got H to hide and Alt H to unhide. So since I know the key binding, the actual shortcut, what you can actually do is come up here and choose key binding instead and search for that. So I'm going to search for H. We have more uh, menu items to scroll through and you can actually hover over here and you see this scroll bar. You can actually scroll down like this. And we got a sequencer. Here we go. So we got the same things. H, Shift H, and Alt H you can see right there. But look at what they're called. Mute. It's mute strips and unmute strips. So this is really confusing and you will see this throughout Blender. They're working on making it more consistent, I believe, with the, their naming stuff. I mean, they're constantly updating things to make Blender more consistent as a whole, but right now this currently isn't. And so if you run into the situation, you can search through key binding. Now we know it's called unmute strips. So let's say I want to change this. So I'm gonna click this and then type U and you see it disappears. And why does it disappear is because we are searching through key binding, which right now is H, not U. So if we come back over here, we now know it's called unmute. So we're going to type in unmute and look at that. Only the sequencer has something called unmute. And there we go. There's our change. There's our U. But now that we have the name here, we can keep changing this without it disappearing. So let's just 
restore that to alt h i don't want to change it to you i actually want to make this even easier and this is the next thing that i wanted to show with these preferences is this drop down and all of these there's a drop down that you can do that will show you a whole bunch of other things so for instance this one is unmute strips and the value name is actually called sequencer dot unmute so you can actually search by the value if you know the value and like i showed you here look at that i have all the values here on my cheat sheet so you can just search all of these and uh change it go right there you don't have to spend a ghastly amount of time trying to find something um, but yeah, if I copy that and I paste it here, did I copy that? Yeah, there we go. It's going to pull up the same exact things. Um, but let's see if it's sequencer mute. Ah, yeah. So sequencer mute brings up the mute strips. Um, and that was just a guess, by the way. But if we open that up, yeah, there you go. Sequencer mute. Okay, but I want to go back to my unmute here and show you some more properties. So you can change a whole bunch of these. So you can make it uh, shift alt h or shift control alt h or all of them if you want to make it really complicated but what i found that's good for this one is having this at just a regular h but then clicking this drop down and choosing double click now you see all of these other things that you can choose i'm going to just going to choose double click and then you see this dbl dash h so one H is to hide and then double H is to unhide. And that is a lot faster when you're editing rather than trying to do the alt H. So before we export, I'm gonna show you one more thing here. And since I already know this, I'm gonna type it in sequencer.select. And I'm gonna to go to my left mouse, which is just our, the normal select here. You can see that uh, left mouse. I'm just follow that over here and open up this select. And then you can see we have a lot more options. So Deselect on nothing. If I just click out of there, you can see it deselects on nothing. Um, so if I select that and then I uncheck this and then I click, it still deselects on nothing. And that is because if we uh, come down here and scroll down and look for another left mouse, you can see we have another left mouse with the sequencer tool here. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just open this drop down and then uncheck deselect on nothing. Now, if I select something and then I click out of that, you can see it's not deselecting. So that's how that works. But I like the deselect of nothing, so I'm gonna check that. And then let's say linked time. This one is awesome because if I just select one of them, then both of them are selected. And the reason is because they are the same frame range on the exact same frame. Same thing with the handles. If I select one handle, it'll select the other handle. Now it's a little buggy here. I don't know why. Maybe I'm not selecting right. Uh, let's go ahead and go up here. And we're going to make sure these are the same. So, so it's not, there we go. That's a little bit better. But they have to be the same length and on the same frame. And there's a whole bunch of other things that you can play with that are really cool on these shortcuts in the preferences. But I've changed everything that I'm going to now. So let's export our key map. So after you've changed everything that you wanted to, come up here to export. And now we want to name our key map custom key map or whatever you want, enter, and then export key configuration, boom. Now, before we import it, we are not gonna save our preferences, so don't click that button. We're gonna to come to preferences and then revert to saved preferences. This is going to revert to the last saved, which was the defaults. So click that, boom, now we're all back here. If you come out down here, you can see we're at K and Shift K right there. Um, we just have a single select with these and our hide and double H doesn't work. It has to be alt H. So all of that is back to normal. Now we can import our key map and it should take us right to our custom key map that we made. Either double click or click on it and then click import key configuration. And look at that, voila. We now have our custom key map in the list with all of the blender stuff. And so uh, let's see here. We have strip. Oh, so we did actually change that K and that shift K back um, before we exported. But um, if we come to lock mute, you can see H and then double H. And then if we select this, it selects both of them. So now let's say, oh gosh, I forgot to change something and you want to change your custom key map. Okay. It's going to be the same thing. So you're just going to 
change it here like this. Change shortcut F and then change shortcut shift F. And um, now I don't know why it had the auto save checked again. I don't know, maybe it did that automatically after I imported it or exported it, I don't know. But make sure that's unchecked still, so we haven't saved it. <laughs> and now we want to export it, and we're going to export it right over our custom key map, which is already named, so I'm just going to export key configuration. Now be careful, it's not going to warn you if you're going to save over it. It just will save over it. So export key configuration, now it should save over that. And now I'm going to preferences, revert to saved preferences, and... Just for good measure, I'm going to delete this custom key map that we have. Okay, so import. Make sure we have our custom key map selected and import. Okay, custom key map imported. Let's see if that changed it. Yes, now we have F and Shift F. And if we come up here, we can change it back to Blender, hopefully. Yes, and now we have K and Shift K. And the reason we're doing that, let's just say, uh, Let's go back to our custom key map. Let's just say for select all, we want to change this to R. Okay, R. Yeah, there we go. R selects all of them now. Okay, so that was, we changed that on our custom key map. Okay, that's good. Um, preferences, save our preferences. Boom. But if I come back here to Blender, look at that. It doesn't change. So let's restore it. Back to A for Blender. Okay, now let's go back to our custom key map. Oh, look at that. It changed it with our custom key map too. You see, it changes it globally for all of them, unless you do it the way I just told you. You have to not save your preferences, export, revert back to the save preferences, and then import. It's a long way around it, but once you have it done, you can now use different key maps for different workflows in Blender. So for example, I do a lot of my editing, my video editing with my fast shortcuts, but I don't want those fast shortcuts to be messing up anything else I do in Blender. So when I go back to the 3D view, or if I go to compositing, I want to go back to Blender and it's no problem. I just go right back here. Uh, we've got K and Shift K there. Uh, custom key map, we got F and Shift F there. So all in all, the work put into it is worth it. But if you screw things up as you're trying to do this, unless you accidentally save your preferences or you make a change and things start to go wacky, well, there's a couple ways you can fix this. The first thing you can do is come up to your preferences and then load factory preferences. And then that will load all of the preferences that comes default in Blender out of the box. Now that will get rid of all of your other preferences that you've changed in your preferences editor. So anything you change about the interface or the themes or the viewport, it will all be the factory defaults again. So you gotta watch out for that. If you're still having issues, you can uh, do defaults and then load factory settings, but that will change the whole Blender into its factory default and you will lose all of your settings throughout all of Blender. So uh, before you do that, just be, be careful. A better way to do it is just locate your Blender config folder. Ta-da! And here it is. And in the Windows default uh, path for this, this is in your app data folder. So it's like C Windows users and then your username. And then I believe it's app data after that. I'll put it down here at the bottom so you can see. But once you get there, you should see all of the versions of Blender that you have settings for. You can see I've tested out with a lot of different versions. I've renamed some of them. And so we just go in here. The one that's not renamed is the current one that we're using now. You can see we have our configuration. We've got bookmarks, platform support, recent files, user preferences. These are all added automatically when you change anything in Blender. Uh, same thing here, um, scripts. Uh, we've got add-ons that you've added presets and here's your key configuration come in here look at that there's your custom key map right there now you can also save just like when we exported our custom key map you can save that custom key map anywhere you want but it will also end up here and in order to change that here what you can do is delete all of this stuff here or an easier way is just to rename it which is why you saw me rename the other one so i'm just going to rename this key config as hold for now and then we're going to come back to Blender here. I'm just going to save it real quick. And open recent. I'm going to open the one that I just saved. And you can see if we come back here to key map and up here to Blender, you can see my custom key map is gone. And all of the changes, anything that we changed for the keyboard configuration, it's back to the defaults. 
And this is helpful if you don't want to change all of your settings here. You just want to change that keyboard. It's right there. And again, you can delete it or rename it. I suggest you rename it. Once you start making more changes, it will add another key config there. You can have them in iterations. Anyway, that is it. That's how you can make your own custom key map. I hope that's helpful. And I hope I can cut this video down to below 20 minutes so that it's worth the middle of the range. But if you want to support me, go to my Gumroad. You can check out the things there, the freebies. I will continue to add to that. And until next time, happy editing.